Excellent. Well, welcome to today's free webinar on etheric body clearing, everybody. So some of you may have, some of you may not have, but last week or so, Warren did his own webinar of being your own physician doctor. So I decided that I will do an etheric body clearing in light of that to kind of combine it with that, with his practical kind of approach, bringing in more of an energy quantum type of perspective. So I hope you're all as excited as I am to get started on today's webinar. So without further ado, we'll now begin. So we'll first cover what you'll be learning, starting with how powerful energy is all around you and how you can summon, harness and channel it to improve all the different areas of your life. The spiritual and scientific principles of financial imprints and money blockages and how to eliminate and shield yourself from their damaging effects. How to find the source of and unhook the hidden attachments secretly attracting business investments, personal losses or anything related to you. How to overcome and reverse past negative business experiences or investment losses, financial problems, which are fracturing the energy field, blocking you from being able to achieve the health and the wealth and the success that you're seeking. And what I'll be doing is facilitating a powerful step-by-step -step live clearing, which will free you of um, ne sabotaging negative blockages and any health blocks or whatever. So much like a powerful magnet, you can attract prosperity in all the different areas of your life. So today is more about dealing with and facing the traumas, the emotions, and those type of issues that we go through internally. Because as we all know, it's that's a very different ball game to a practical approach. Because the practical approach, it can help the physical body. But what's important is that your etheric body or your aura is, is very clear. So type a Y in the text chat if you're familiar with or you've heard of the etheric body or like the auric field. Okay, great. So I mean, a lot of you have, great to see. And so you would know if you're familiar with it, that it's, it's, it's important that it, it stays clean because otherwise if you heal your physical body, but you don't deal with the source or the root cause behind it, it's just going to come back and it'll be a lot worse than last time. So before, what we'll do is before, uh, before we, so before we officially get into today's webinar, we'll first have a look at the auric field and what it actually is. So we don't just have a physical body. We also have an auric field or like an etheric body, which surrounds us. The, and this or etheric body or our auric field is our energetic or higher light body which exists beyond this physical world or dimension. Really, our auric field is the real source that keeps us alive. It wouldn't be the bacon and eggs you had for breakfast this morning or the hot chocolate that you had on a cold day. And really, it's this etheric body because this is where our energy and our spirit actually flows through. And on top of that, we've also got eight morphogenetic chakras in our auric field, as well as the seven embodied chakras on our, um, on our body. We've also got eight in the auric field. Unfortunately, most people are not aware of this, which, which would explain why they create auric attachments daily, which is what we'll get into in a moment through various sources such as karma. So we'll now look at auric attachments. So auric attachments are negative energies or entities which exist within our auric field. So who here um, is familiar with or heard of the auric attachments? Type a Y or an N in the chat if you have or you haven't. Okay, great. So um, a, a lot of you have. Faye, nope. All right, so we'll continue on. They can range from anything really. They can be barbs and hooks or spears, demons, wounded souls, and so forth. 
even the name itself kind of explains what it is. It's an attachment or something unnatural in your auric field, which should not be there. And these get in the way of us connecting to our higher self and getting the mental clarity. And they also have the ability to drain our energy field, which keeps us from optimum functioning and from operating at a higher level, like we naturally are supposed to. They will eventually manifest in your physical life if they're not cleared and dealt with in the etheric or the higher body. The big question is how are they created? So let's dive in a bit further. Most commonly from what are called analogical experiences, which in turn create is. What this means is when you experience something so traumatic that you freeze for like a moment in time. And when you do freeze, then what's happening is your, your soul or like your, your auric field is being fractured and damaged. And then it's being replaced by a cold, a colder and harder um, type of id. Hence what it's, hence why the id, because it's short for ident identity. So uh, that extreme trauma, it can be like from a partner cheating on you. It could be from witnessing a horrible fight in the street, or it could be the, or losing somebody that was very close to you. It could just be anything like those. And by making choices, not align with the highest spiritual laws or your own truth. And this is one of the biggest ways that people create these auric attachments is by making choices which go against the higher laws or their own truth. Not managing your emotions and exploding with no self-control. Or in other words, not, not being able to control your impulses and allowing your yourself to be ruled and consumed by your emotions. Not speaking your truth or constantly mistreating and hurting other people. Misuse of sexual energy. So like lying to get sex, cheating, manipulation, power games, having sex just for the sake of it, etc. Constantly rescuing other people and being so wrapped up in being the helper that you never once think about yourself. So we'll now dive into how they affect you. You lose touch of your real soul, who you are, and create a, a new identity for yourself. So you, one that operates on pain and suffering instead of operating from your true essence and who you actually are. Then the attachments become more solidified and condensed if not dealt with quickly. It's like washing dishes, really. When you do it straight away and you get onto it fast, then it'll just slide straight off. But the longer you leave it, the more the mold and the hardness creeps up onto it. And that's going to be a real pain in the ass to wash off. And so they get into each of your 15 chakras and block them from flowing properly. Because our chakras uh, are like our energy centers, like our life force. And it's a bit like a river. When there's, no, when there's no debris or dams in the river, it just flows very smoothly and very nicely. But as soon as debris or, da or dams start coming into the river or the creek, then as you can imagine, it stops <laughs> flowing properly, it dries out. And hence why a lot of people tend to find themselves tired and struggle to make it through day to day and different issues such as those. You can potentially attract unwanted experiences or relationships into your life that you don't want. Ascending back to God and being at one with him won't be possible at all. Accessing the higher dimensions and your higher self will be a major challenge. So even if you do access it, you're going to have a hell of a time up there. So here's an interesting fact for you to know. Those effects are the reason someone can experience a radical change in their personality. Simply because they went through a traumatic event and created ids out of it 
and also how the multiple um, split personality disorder and other things such as those are in existence. When ids are not cleared and dealt with, you lose touch of your true soul and can end up as someone whose light has grown dim. So, so who here would say that they've been through a, a, enough traumatic experiences to say that you may have um, an id or a lot more than the one id? Yeah, so quite so pretty so a lot pretty much a lot of people here then. So and being an it being in a human body and being who we are, I mean, the truth is we would we we will always be vulnerable to this type of thing unless until we leave this planet in some way or another, especially being human. What's important is it's like, like having a shower. Like we all shower every day or at least regularly so we can keep our body clean from odors and bacteria and to really look good type of thing but but yeah most people completely ignore or don't do much of um cleaning their spiritual or etheric bodies even though that's just as important if not more so because it's like having a spiritual shower by doing these uh, um clearings or healings on ourselves regularly it keeps our internal world balanced out. And of course, you'll attract experiences according to that frequency. Financially, you'll strive and struggle and have money, money blocks everywhere. So another interesting fact here is that auric attachments locate themselves in your chakras based on the emotion and trauma you've gone through. This means that each of your seven chakras all have completely different meanings and frequencies. Meaning whatever emotion, accident, illness, trauma, or anything similar will determine whether blockage will be in the chakras. As an example, if you have an unresolved experience around heartbreak and love, it will be stored in the heart chakra or your fourth one. And if you have a, an id around speaking your truth, it will be in the fifth chakra or your throat chakra. Okay, so these are the different types of attachments which which uh, um, can which tend to be in the auric field. So starting with occupants, um, so and to sum to sum these up because we, we won't go into too much detail uh, because otherwise this is a whole course in itself, but. To sum it up, with occupants, they're like negative thought forms. It's um, it's when you experience something traumatic or or experience a negative person or whatever, and rather than deal with the emotion and the issue behind it, you create like an emotional charge around it. So, meaning the more you think about that situation or person, the more angry and emotionally charged you become. And it, it goes from being a negative thought to like a negative thought form. And then that will be like a magnetic effect, which will magnetically attract um, issues according to the frequency. So if you have an emotional charge um, towards your mother, as an example, um, then if it's not your mother, you'll just keep attracting people just like her until you deal with that issue and learn the lesson. And then discarnates, they're like beings who have passed, but there's but they haven't gone through the, the tunnel of light or that or anything. So meaning that they're stuck on the astral realm, or they're like souls who don't have a body. And, and then you've got the wormholes. So these are like doorways in our etheric bodies, which allow negative entities from higher dimensions to suck off our energy and our life force. And then you've got portals, which are created when you absorb energies or um, from other people, or when, like when you rescue someone, where you feel so bad for someone that you take on their burdens and responsibilities. So this, may, which will leave um, these portals looking like slits in your auric field or etheric body. And then you've got the ids, which we've been talking about, where it's like a soul fragment which is alive and well and it effect, it's affecting us from the past experiences and traumas that we've gone through 
where we're operating from a place of pain and suffering instead of operating from a balanced perspective and who we are. And then there, then and then you've got like the personalities, which are like the shadow selves of the ids, and and what gets created when these ids get get formed. And then you've got like, and then you've got the archetypes, um, which which is which basically is like a shadow within yourself um, that hasn't been dealt with. It's like a, it can be a belief pattern or it can be like programming from when you were young or any or any, or anything such as that basically you're you're operating from like more of a wound more of a shadow um, so so before we get go further just type in the text chat which of those auric attachments you feel like you um, might be in your in your etheric body or the ones that call out to you the most because what I do tend to notice as well is that a lot of people tend to have a lot more than just one of these listed here. Okay, so we've got ids from Faye, archetypes from Rebecca, portals from Suzanne. So we've got a mix so far. All right, so we've got a few more. Tara said all, and Vicky, wormholes, portals, joy all. Stasha, what about Archons? So Ar Archons, that's much different because they can be in much, they can be in much more places than just your auric field. Well, and, and those guys are like, those guys are far more dangerous than any of these attachments listed here, because now we're talking like dark being territory. Sheldon, Discarnates and Ids, Judith, Ids for sure, also Occupants, Portals maybe more. And Suzanne, um, uh, different ones at different times. Yep, great, thanks Christine. Um, you can hear me, yep. Yep, so we'll move to the next stage now. And Okay, Stasha says, the gin. Honestly, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really familiar with the gin, but I'm sure that Google will have a lot of info on that. And so, how do you clear these? So, the main method of clearing auric attachments is with an is with what's called an auric clearing, and this is the type of clearing that tends to be most effective when dealing with the etheric body. Auric clearing is the fastest and most effective way to transmute attachments. So here's some other methods that you can also use to clear them on top of the clearing. Stepping on your path and purpose and really living it. Start making better choices, which uh, are more aligned with the universal laws and your own tr truth. Check for any karma that you may have with someone or yourself and make it right. Seek to serve something beyond yourself and be mindful of not falling into personal gain. So here's some more details on what an auric clearing really is. So in simple terms, it means clearing your auric field or your etheric body. An, an auric clearing involves scanning the multidimensional light body. And it also uses higher esoteric language, energy directing techniques and relevant codes to communicate with your higher self, as well as your subconscious mind to permanently transmute these attachments so they don't come so that they don't come back again. You then recover gold doll fragments that represent pearls of wisdom from the issue being cleared. So meaning that once it's cleared, you um, as well as the clearing, you also um, will learn the lesson behind it so that you don't create any more. At the end of the session, we download new chords, new templates, and new soul programming from the higher self. This will result with you embodying a much higher frequency in your life and day to day. 
plus your reality can really change by attracting people, places, times, things, and events which resonate with your new higher frequency. So now what we'll do is look at the science behind clearing these um, attachments. To put it simply, the universe really is one giant hologram or illusion. And scientists are agreeing that there is a quantum or esoteric realm which governs all things. So we'll look at some examples. Carl Pribben, a, neuro, a neurophysicist of, of, of Stanford University. Okay, Faye says I'm breaking up. It, is anyone else having that problem? Nope. Okay, great. Yep. So, and Suzanne said sometimes. So maybe just check your reception or your internet again. Otherwise, um, otherwise, if if this really does become a problem on my end, I'll just restart and come back or whatever. So, so anyway, um, the first one here was Carl Pribben, a neurophysicist of Stanford University. Yeah, great. And Stasha, I just saw your comment of that they're them being shadow beings, so you, that they think they apply. Yeah, absolutely. When it's it, anything to do with darker beings, they definitely do apply. But again, that, that's an entire um, court, different course, um, entire different course and different information. And because those guys are far more dangerous and much more of a web to break through than, than these attachments. Okay, and the other one is David Bohm, a physicist at the University of London, Amit Goswani. Who, who is a physicist of Oxford University and Dr. Joe Dispenser. Put it another way, they are realizing that consciousness precedes matter or, or matter precedes consciousness. So, so they, because um, that, that was the old belief that of matter or this physical density preceding consciousness, but actually it's the other way round. They're finally realizing that consciousness does precede matter. And that, and even Michael Corbett in his book, the holographic universe had his own interesting view on this topic. In this, in his book, the holographic universe, he suggests that coffee cups, trees, table lamps, might not exist or even exist in the way that we believe them to be. In other words, it's all an illusion and the mystics and the crazy people were actually right. So, so for one, for once, um, scientists and spirituality are actually agreeing and working hand in hand, like they were always meant to be. Your mind is like a radio transmitter which tunes into the radio stations of infinite realms of energy. We are manifesting every second, minute, hour of the day and night. And our thoughts create our reality. Not just that, but also the collective consciousness of those around us. In other words, we are affected by the mass mind and what's going on in the world on that energetic quantum level. And as you can imagine, with the mess it's in right now, it's it's more important than ever that we keep our energy clear and keep our etheric bodies nice and clean. Our life is a hologram of what we create. Because remember, we can shape and create our destiny and our path. Your, your subconscious mind works with your conscious mind. It's like a film or movie screen. So the two really do work hand in hand. And the way you can think of it is like this. So the, the move, there's the movie projector, which would be like your subconscious mind and your conscious mind would be your thoughts or like the CD that you're going to place into the projector. 
Now, obviously, if you wanted to watch, if you wanted to watch Star Wars, but then you put a CD that says Lord of the Rings, well, it's going to play Lord of the Rings, no matter how much you kick shout the screen, it's going to play whatever CD you've placed in there. And uh, that, and uh, how much more does this apply with our own thoughts, our own emotions, and our own bullshit? I mean, uh, our own thoughts, we can we can really change and shape our reality for the better by feeding our subconscious mind with, with better thoughts, better choices, and going, and going more with the higher universal laws and our own truth. So classic physics is questionable and quantum physics makes sense, even if you can't put it into words. Everything is interconnected. So there's like, we all have invisible energy strings, which connect us all. Space and time is not linear, but quantum. Holographic theory is real. So unless you're actively combating or, and managing your energy against the mass mind, it doesn't matter what you do. You'll keep attracting back to the same hologram as it, it is as it is your consciousness which determines your reality. And I remember, and I remember hearing even a Bible verse that says that well, he that he that hath to him it shall be given; to he that hath not, it shall be taken from him even that which he hath. So, which is in Mark somewhere, and basically that means that. If you, uh, if you have whatever beliefs you have or emotions, whatever in your consciousness is what you're going to create and attract. And so if you don't believe in yourself or you don't believe that you can do something great with your life or, um, or make a big change, well then, well then of course you won't. And you'll just be attracting that type of frequency because it's in the consciousness. It's like you're in an elastic band, which keeps pulling you back to the same place. You're being pulled back to square one. The law of attraction and frequently and frequency is like gravity or radio waves. In other words, it's not moral or emotional and doesn't care what's fair, unfair, or what should happen. It's just what is. And, and you are accountable whether you like it or not. And so then acquiring financial imprints and, and acquiring its attachments can happen from things like the trading market, parents' beliefs and spoken words over us, going broke in your business, losing your job, being cheated on by a business partner, your own partner, or getting bad advice, losing in an investment or having money stolen from you. A traumatic emotional experience or neuro association, spiritual dissociation or repressive disorders. Bad examples around money, like heroes and business leaders who make a lot of money, but they have uh, they have completely poor character and low ethics. Making a bad mistake and creating a story around it, or blaming yourself or others. Mass mind belief systems, being in a corrupt fire and greedy system, much so like a dirty house, really. When you, when you clean your house regularly, it will stay spotless and, and it'll be enjoyable to live in. But then, but when you stop doing it, then slowly the dust and the junk piles up and it will go back to how it was previously or worse. And so clearing your blockages. So um, this and this is what the auric the auric clearing does too. Is it really goes through these chakras, and uh, what we'll do is go over each one briefly before we get into the clearing. But the root chakra or the first one is like basic trust or your or like survival. The sacral chakra is your sexuality, your creativity. The solar plexus is your wisdom and your, your, your personal power. The heart chakra is about love and healing and life. Throat chakra is communication. The third eye chakra is your awareness in that cosmic realm and also this physical realm. 
um, your crown chakra is spirituality or your connection to the higher cosmic realm. Okay, so are there any questions before we jump into the clearing? Stasha, I remove spirit attachments as my job. That's great to hear, Stasha. We, cert we, cert we certainly need a lot more healers in this world at the moment. Stasha, I want to know if it's possible to remove them from yourself. I absorb a lot of them daily. Well, yes, you would. You definitely would if you're clearing other people and you're not managing yourself. So it, it is possible to remove them from yourself. It, it is. What's, what's important is that you have someone clearing you because when you're a healer, it's most, it's even more important that you have somebody, you have someone to clear you. So you clear a hundred to 200 people every month. Yes. Okay. That's a fucking lot. That is a lot. Yeah. And you say you, I have no one to trust. <laughs> well, that there, there are different, there, there are different ways that you can deal with that. So, I mean, it could even be something as basic as going for a walk out in nature and then, and asking the Lord to release them from you. And what, cause what I find what works very well is well, Tate is giving back what's, what's theirs and taking back what is yours. Yeah. So what's important is that when you're clearing the, when you're clearing the clients like that, you don't want to be absorbing their shit. You want, you want to be, you want to be staying in your own self once the clearing is over. And well, as I mentioned, just, uh, even if it, it just give and try, even try it, just giving back what's theirs, taking back what is yours. And in a way as well, even when you're clearing someone, it, it does give you a clearing in itself. And well, you're right that it's a lesson in trust. It, yeah, it's just, it's just a way, it's just a matter of finding someone that you can really trust to do clearing on you. Even if it's not clearing itself, even just someone that you can talk to about your emotions and what's going on internally. Yes, correct. Because when you're a healer, it's, 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 it's much more important and vital to you to make sure you have somebody to clear you. So yes, and I do understand because I was like that. I was clearing a lot of people when, um, years ago when I was just um, new to the healing and it really drained a lot of my energy and it left me feeling tired all the time. And I paid a price until, until I had someone to guide me. And Suzanne, we all need to clear our auric fields every day in the time we're experiencing now. Yes, you're correct, Suzanne. Uh, we, we certainly do. It's far more important than ever now. Yes, you'd be tired. You'd be depleted, um, Stasha. And you, and uh, you, and, and also, um, uh, you'd be erratic internally. You do pay a big price for, um, for not taking care of yourself. It's like, it's like they say in the planes. I mean, they always tell you in the safety procedure to put your mask, oxygen mask on before putting it on your child or somebody else. Right? Because really, if you can't help yourself, can you really help others? because you'll just be giving from a place of lack and from nothing. So by taking care of yourself and putting yourself first, because that's, that's the other factor being able to put yourself first. Cause then by you helping yourself, will you not be more effective um, in helping others? Well, and that's just it. You, you can't, yeah, you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't save everybody. So the truth, and that's just it. You need to learn how to say no. Sometimes, sometimes, you, sometimes it is, it is vital to you to say no. Because, well, it, remember, even Jesus couldn't fucking help everyone. 
I mean, look at all the great he did, and he still got crucified. Well, it, well, well, yes. And uh, when you're doing healing, you're summoning spirits, and uh, that's that's no joke to be taken lightly. Because if you don't know what you're doing, well, then you don't know which spirits could be watching. Well, if, well, yeah, well, that's right. If they've summoned the spirits to themselves on purpose, well, then, well, I mean, then that was their fault for being, for, for being stupid because, well, summoning spirits, it's not, it's no, it's not a fucking joke because again, you don't, if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know who may be watching. Well, well, exactly. So the, the most important thing is to be careful and be more mindful who you actually take on to heal. That, that, because that's all too, it's, um, more than just trust. It's about knowing who you can, it's about knowing who you can and about knowing which people that you, you will say no to and the, which people you will. Well, precisely if they don't even believe in the spirit world, well, um, in the spirit world, well, I mean, uh, then they, then you're going to have a fucking tough client there. That's all I'll say. Mm, Faye, I've finally found my voice and I'm, and I'm setting stronger boundaries. Yes. And at first it can be difficult because again, I've been there. I know what it's like to, to, to want to help someone if I can. But, but ultimately, there is such thing as overgiving. And when you do it, you pay a price. When you set the boundaries, that's when you can find that balance, not just within yourself, but helping other people to find that balance as well. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah, Stasha, best not, um, best not to post here, but you feel free to message me privately. Um, you can just, you can message, you can message me on email. And my, so my email is William at the awakening within.net. If you, if you wanted to reach out to me personally. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Thanks for understanding. Faye, that's what I'm doing, helping others to do the same. Fantastic, Faye. Glad to hear. Again, we, we need, well, they need, this world needs more people like us. So what we'll do now is begin this clearing. So Stasha, so Stasha, you can finally get this clearing for yourself now. And so everyone, everyone just focus on this code and inhale it into your auric field or your etheric body. Even with just your intention, you can do that. And just close your eyes and imagine it there. And just start taking some deep breaths to relax your mind. And what we'll do is inhale through the nose for a count of four. Hold it for a count of four and exhale through the mouth for a count of eight. And just repeat that breathing process to relax your mind.
we now call upon the divine protection and the bright white pyramid surrounding me and each person here. And we call upon the five archangels, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael, Michael, and Metatron, and Christ and Mother Mary. So only those who are aligned with the word of God and the Christ consciousness. And we clear and repel any false spirit guides, negative energies, outside interferences, or anything else related now. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that this higher auric calibration code be used be used to clear um, any auric attachments and unintended creations from each person here permanently on all levels of their awareness and in line with their higher self now to Asia in today. We also clear any ids or traumas from the etheric body and the auric field and restore their golden soul fragments, especially clear any from, the, from, their, pro, from their programming from childhood and around the heart. And in, and in the mind. We also close any portals or wormholes in there as well. We also clear and release any discordant emotions. Especially any lack of lack of, of personal power or speaking their truth and really living their path. Remove any discarnates by providing a third or escort, contain them if they resist, and transport them to the astral planes justly earned now. And we now rebalance each person here in all areas of their life. And pour in that golden liquid light and send in the love from the higher mother and father.
Okay, so how's everyone feeling after that clearing? Belinda, great, thank you. Debbie, pretty good. Faye, just wonderful. Michelle, really good. Lots of yawning. Gerda, relaxed. Vicky's light. Joy, lighter. Tara, tired. Yeah, there certainly was a lot being removed there. Stash of my computer froze. Oh, okay, well. You don't have to worry, you would have got the clearing either way, Stasha, but you can always watch the replay if you didn't catch it, because we'll be sending out the replay tomorrow or the next day. Faye, a great help for my dental appointment. Sheldon, relaxed. Marie, great, thanks. Stasha, a lot of energy release, throat chakra. Great to hear, Stasha. Faye, so grateful. Yeah, glad to hear that, Faye. Grateful to serve you guys too. Jacinta, easier to breathe. Aiden feels calmer. Michelle's lights flickered. Risto, ears are popping. Stash and no, I think the energy did it. Yeah, that is definitely possible. That definitely does happen. Suzanne, relaxed. Faye, thanks, William. Judith feeling very peaceful. The colors of the code really resonated and balanced each of the chakras. Shirley, big shift. Film relaxed and much clearer. Awesome. Stasha, I think you're an absorber like me. Yes, I am. Yep, it's a big part of why I can really do the why I can do these clearings and why they're so effective. It was only a temporary pause. Ah, yeah. Deb, yawning, relaxation, thank you. So, yes, yeah, Stasha, you, you definitely do. We definitely are very alike, I'll say that. Helen, I feel more tired as I calm down. That's how I should feel since I've been running around. That, yeah, that's just it. Well, well, uh, when we run around all the time and when we don't uh, have a break for ourselves, that, yeah, that easily can happen. That it will just leave us tired. Faye, you got to go. Bye. Yeah, no worries. Bye, Faye. Thanks for coming. Okay, so everyone now just have a glass of water just to integrate that session. Christine, thanks, William. Yeah, no worries, Christine. Suzanne felt and saw a drill corkscrew entering my left eye and sucking up the, the detritus from my eye. I feel like it is a residue from a head injury way back in 1981. Wow, that's really powerful, Suzanne. Yeah, so it wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, that's um, if it sounds like the higher beings were really doing work on you there. <laughs> Okay, so any questions or comments before we go to the next stage of this webinar? Suzanne, I hope so, need my site back. Yes, and, uh, you, and you certainly can achieve that through your, even, with, even just through your intention. Sheldon, thanks, William. Yeah, no worries, Sheldon. Stash, I'm resting now. It was heavy. I'm grateful and will contact you. Yep, sounds great, Stasha. Yeah, definitely get some good rest after that one. Because these clearings, as you know, these are very intense. They can be intense. 
Risto, very grateful. Judith, no questions. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go to the next stage here now. Okay, so as 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 you as you heard earlier, um, I've I was I've done this webinar in light of Warren's be your own physician one that he did last time to kind of join in with that because then I'll be involved in this workshop myself with him. So, but I just wanted to announce this to let you all know that in July or next month, Warren will be running a one day workshop on how to master the metaphysics of health and energy, how you can apply it in real life to see change and save yourself some serious cash on supplements. So the workshop includes the following principles of shifting your energy, etheric body medicine, homeopathy and flower essences, how they work and are effective, the secrets of manifestation by the yogis and quantum physicists, dowsing principles and techniques, how to apply to health and well-being, finances, practical daily exercises you can do, access to the recordings and much more. And on top of that, there will be a follow-up Q&A class where Warren will follow up with it to explore any challenges you've had, tips to implement, and give options for ongoing learning and mastery for more keen students. So the one-day workshop investment is 347 payable in 10 installments of 3470, or 275 payable up front. But we do have an early bird special, which is valid until tonight. And I'll explain why that is in a sec. Because, because it isn't till July and it's still decently early, the early bird special for the workshop is 237.50 up front. But only for today, because tomorrow will otherwise be too late for this special deal. So to get access to this early bird special, you can use the following bank details of Awakening Within listed up here. And uh, we also our PayPal support at the awakeningwithin.net. And, uh, um, and, uh, the, and uh, what, we, what, what we also have is, what we also, what, what, uh, what we also have is an option to work with me personally, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so just type in the text chat if either of these options interest you. Type a Y if you're interested and type which one, if so. So if this workshop or working with me close to one-on-one -on -one, uh, it, it interests you, just type a Y in the chat and which one of those you are interested in. And then we'll take questions just before we end. Debbie already signed for up for July workshop would lo love to work with with one-on-one -on -one with you on a particular issue okay excellent Debbie so if you scroll up slightly you'll find the discovery call link for me you'll find that the discovery call link where you can book a call in with me and then we'll go from there yep Sean's already signed up great and Marie, what date is the workshop, please? So and it's, it, it'll be around, it, it, it will be in early July, but I just need to double check with Warren again, since, he'll, he, since he's the one mainly running it. So I'll, I'll check with him, Marie, and I'll personally message you. Um, so if that sounds good. Michelle said, yep, yeah, to workshop. Suzanne at Discovery Call, already signed up for July workshop. Excellent. So what I'll do is I'll take, I'll take down the names for those interested in working with me and with the workshop. So Deb, in the future, I would be interested, but doing an energy course at the moment, thank you for today. Yeah, that's no worries, Deb. Thank you, thank you for coming. So Judith already signed up for the one day webinar. Also worked one-on-one -on -one with you before and it really helped with my issues, thanks. 
Yeah, thanks, Judith. No, no, that's no worries. Uh, so to those, so to those who are interested in having a discovery call with me, um, what would what would help is if you could type your email into the text chat, and then I'll get the team to save it, and then we can we can arrange to get the links sent to you. Yep, Suzanne already signed up for July workshop. Excellent, Suzanne, no problem. Yep, thanks, guys. Galaxy S7, hello, what did I just miss? Can you please send me a recording, thanks. Yep, the recording will be sent out tomorrow, or latest Friday, so you won't have to worry about that. Yep, Suzanne, okay, yep, I'll, put, I'll take your email then. Okay, so, um, yep, Debbie Freeman and Michelle, um, if you guys could provide your emails too, that would be great. All right, sweet. Yep, I'll take down these emails and my team will as well. All right, excellent. So my team's noted all your emails there, everyone. So you've, you've got the discovery calling in the chat that you can click on and book your call in now, but me and my team will also email it out to you as well. So thanks again, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. So uh, I hope you all got a lot out of it. And uh, I hope you all have a great day, night, evening, wherever you are. And uh, I look forward to working with you in either the workshop or or one-on-one. Um, -on -one. So take care, everyone. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.